thank you for the introduction and welcome everybody. I'm Annika Schoenhoff from the University of Hamburg and I will show you today how we can use vacuum resonance states above surfaces as atomic scale probes of non-collinear surface magnetism. But before I start, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me and for giving me the opportunity to present my research here. Now, um, Understanding and controlling spin-dependent scattering of electrons at surface is crucial for the future spintronic applications. And uh, here you see a schematic sketch of an electron that is scattered at the surface. And this electron reflection at the surface is accompanied by a phase shift phi of the electron wave function. Now, in all the established experimental approaches to study spin-dependent scattering of electrons at surfaces, they are all literally averaging. And this is the reason why atomic scale variations of the scattering process, as for example, at non-collinear magnetic surfaces where the surface spins rotate here on a local scale, could not be studied so far. So, um, we use a scanning time microscope setup to study the electron reflection on a local scale. And here you see a schematic sketch of the corresponding energy diagram. So on the left side, you have the tip. On the right side, you have the surface. <clears throat> and if we apply now a bias that is larger than the work function of the sample, then electrons can tunnel here into states that are located in front of the surface. And afterwards, they penetrate into the surface and relax to the fermi level of the surface. Now, we can think of an electron in such a resonance state as um, traveling back and forth and being multiple times here reflected at the surface and at the potential barrier here, each time suffering from a phase shift. And in order to get here a stable state, a certain resonance condition has to be fulfilled. And this is why we will call these states in the following resonance states. Now, due to this electron reflection here at the surface, uh, the resonance states are highly sensitive to the electronic and uh, atomic surface structure. And we can locally address now this resonance state in our scanning tunneling microscope setup. So we have here the tip and the surface. We have the resonance state located in front of the surface. We apply a bias and we detect the current that flows from the tip via the resonance state to the surface. And we can also detect the differential conductance between tip and surface by locking technique. And by this, we realize an electron vacuum interferometer on the atomic scale. And the question arises now, can this resonance state here in front of the surface, can this also mediate the spin information from the surface to our probe tip? Now, in order to identify the resonance states, we have to perform a local bias spectroscopy, and we have to do this at constant electric field, because otherwise we change here the shape of the potential well and we shift the states. So we can realize a bias spectroscopy at constant electric field by keeping our feedback on while we ran the sample bias. So in this case, the tip retracts you from the surface in a way that keeps the current constant. And in the special energy regime of the scanning time microscope, the current is only a function of the electric field. So if we keep the current constant, we keep the electric field approximately constant. And whenever the applied bias is now in resonance with, an energetic, uh, with the energetic position of a resonance state, an additional transmission channel opens here for the electrons and they can tunnel here resonantly into such a state in front of the surface. And um, the tip has then to retract disproportional due to this additional resonant tunneling current. And this is how we can detect the states. So we get steps here in the tip sample displacement and peaks in the differential conductance. Now, um, the spectrum that I show you here um, has been recorded in the clean uh, surface of the iron double layer on tungsten 110. And here you see a conventional STM topography image. And here you see the corresponding magnetic VIDU map, which was recorded simultaneously on the surface. And the spin texture is here indicated in a side view. So this system of the double layer iron on tungsten 110 is very well known and well studied. 
Performing now laterally and still reserved spectroscopy of the first resonance peak at different positions here on the spin texture reveal that the resonance state changes position and height with position on the spin texture. And if we adjust now the sample bias, for example, to 4.6 volt, and we scan again over the surface while recording the differential conductance here, we plot it again as a function of lateral position, then we can generate a nice magnetic image of the underlying spin texture while tunneling into the first resonance state. And of course, we can also zoom out and perform large-scale magnetic imaging, and here the magnetic map is textured on the topography. Now, instead of plotting the differential conductance here as a function of lateral position, we can also plot the differential conductance signal here as a function of the relative orientation between the tip surface spin and uh, between the tip spin and the surface spin. And this is what you can see here. So here we see the differential conductance as a function of the enclosed angle between tip and surface spin orientation. And now we see that we get a cosine dependency on the enclosed angle of tip and sample magnetization. And this is exactly the imaging function of spin polar scanning telling microscopy. So this indicates that the magnetic contrast that we see when we tunnel into the resonance state is generated by the spin-dependent tunnel into spin-dependent resonance states. Now again, we see a dependency on the surface spin orientation, but we know that we are tunneling into the resonance state in front of the surface. And this indicates that the resonance state itself is spin-split and exhibits the spin quantization axis that rotates here locally with the underlying surface spin texture. Now, for the iron double layer on Thompson 110, the spins rotate here by pi within about 10 nanometer. And the question arises, what happens if the spin rotates now really on the atomic scale, meaning within a few angstrom? So therefore, we have to exchange the substrate and we have to go to the double layer iron and the video 111. Because this system is known to exhibit a spin spiral ground state, uh, where the spins rotate here by uh, pi within less than one nanometer. And when we scan now with our uh, tip over the surface, we get a very large signal if surface uh, spin and tip spin are aligned, resulting in this bright contrast. And we get a dark, uh, we get a low signal uh, for the anti parallel alignment, resulting here in this dark uh, contrast. And this is how this periodic pattern here um, uh, is uh, determined by the underlying spin spiral in the image. Now, here on the left side, uh, you see now an iron double layer island on Iridium 111. It's a conventional constant current SPSTM image recorded with electrons tunneling directly into the surface. And the system is known to exhibit two different uh, types of dislocation lines appearing at different heights as indicated here uh, by the green and the dark lines. But more important for us now is that the spin spirals are known to propagate along these dislocation lines. And you can see here in the zoom and again a very nice uh, periodic pattern due to the underlying spin spiral. Now here you see now a bias dependent uh, series uh, of the same iron island. Um, recorded for tunneling into the first, the fourth, and the ninth resonance state at a bias of 4.9 volt, 7.8 volt, and 10.1 volt. And first of all, you might realize that topographic features like here the atomic scale step edge uh, tend to smear out, and this, this has already been found by spin average studies. But interestingly, the atomic scale magnetic pattern remains visible. And this indicates that the resonance states reflect the local spin quantization axis that rotates here really on the atomic scale. Now, of course, also in this system, we can zoom out and perform large scale magnetic imaging. And this was recorded here for tunneling into the first resonance state. And you can see here large domains where the spin spirals propagate in the same direction. Now, in this extended film, we performed a bias uh, uh, dependent spectroscopy. Uh, up to 20 volts, 
and the peaks uh, reveal then here again the energy positions of the first 31 resonance states. Here you see this independent corrugation recorded along the spin spiral once for an electron with an energy of 5 electron volt corresponding to tunneling into the first resonance state and once for an electron with an energy of 18 electron volt which corresponds to tunneling into the 27th resonance state. And the spatially resolved and spin resolved spectroscopy confirms again that also this high energy state the spin split and reveals uh, or exhibits the local surface spin quantization axis. And there's nothing special about the 27th, so we have uh, analyzed all the resonance states and irrespective of their energy, uh, the resonance states exhibit a spin quantization axis that rotates here with the atomic scale surface spin structure. Now, we attribute the origin of this resonance state spin sensitivity to the spin-dependent electron reflection at the surface that is itself of atomic scale nature. So, our findings imply that the resonance condition that I have introduced in the beginning must be fulfilled with a spin-dependent phase shift that is set here by the local spin quantization axis of the nonpolinear surface. And within a simple triangular potential model for the high energy state, we can calculate then this phase shift from our spectroscopic uh, spin result peak positions. And this is what you see here. So you see here uh, the magnetic map of uh, the iron double layer um, spin spiral on the iridium surface. And the positions where we have took the when we have taken the spectra um, are indicated. And here are now the corresponding phase shift of an electron upon reflection at the spin spiral, which is indicated here in a side view. And again, a color-coded map of this phase shift. And this is a phase shift for an electron with an energy of 18 electron volt. So obviously, the phase shift reveals a periodic modulation according to the underlying spin spiral. And I hope I have convinced you that our experimental setup allows for mapping the spin-dependent electron wave function phase shift on the atomic scale. So if you're interested in more details, you can read this here in um, my publication. And um, yes, uh, ah, <laughs> sorry. Let's have a short look on the implications of the sensitivity. So we know that the nonlinear magnetism is a consequence of the interplay between Heisenberg exchange, Dranschinsky Maria, and spin orbit interactions. Um, it is also well known that this phase shift is determined by the surface electronic band structure around the respective electron energy. Now, the sensitivity of the phase shift to the nonpolinear magnetism implies now that all the spin dependent interactions that drive the nonpolinear magnetic ground state. And that are known to be quite small in the range of milli volt per atom, that they affect the band structure even far above the vacuum level. So I have talked now a lot about the physics, and in the following, I want to explore a bit more the imaging capabilities of this uh, resonant uh, tunneling technique, because we have learned that uh, from the spectroscopy that if we keep the current constant, we tunnel into these resonant states at nanometer distances. And the question arises, can we use these, can we use high order resonance states for robust magnetic imaging on the atomic scale? So what do I mean with robust in this um, context? So from conventional spin polar scanning tunnel microscopy, we know that it allows for atomic resolution, but only at the expense of the tip sample distance, which has to be uh, very small in the range of a few angstrom. And this is of course technically difficult. So there's always uh, the risk of uh, destructive sample collisions, and this, the technique is also sensitive, highly sensitive to vibrations. So technically feasible distances are, for example, flying heights of weak bright heads and nowadays data storage devices, and they are in a range of a few nanometers. So the question arises, um, can we perform spin polar scanning tunnel microscopy with atomic scale resolution at nanometer distances? 
So in order to study this, we, cho cho we have chosen a highly non-polymer spin texture by exchanging the double layer iron with the monolayer iron on iridium 111 because this system is known to exhibit the so-called magnetic nano spermion lattice, which is a highly non-polymer spin texture. And um, so you see here a schematic sketch of the spin configuration and individual cones represent surface spins. So here, um, the spins rotate by two pi within one nanometer in two dimensions, resulting in a magnetic unit cell of one times one square nanometer. And here you see again a top view of the magnetic spin configuration overlaid with an SPSM constant current image. And the spin texture gives then rise to a square lattice of bright and dark dots in the image. Now here you see again um, uh, um, on a larger scale the magnetic uh, the SPSM image of the magnetic um, nanoskermion with the unit cell here indicated. And we performed now again a bias spectroscopy to detect the resonance state above the surface. We adjusted the bias scanned again over the surface by recording a um, signal, and we could nicely generate again a magnetic map of the magnetic nanoskermion letters by tunneling into the first resonance state, and the tip sample distance had already increased to one nanometer. Now, in order to, um, to read out in a more convenient way the tip sample distance for tunneling into these resonance states, I plotted here the numerical derivative of the tip sample distance as a function of the tip sample distance. And this is what you can see here. Now we can read now immediately out that for tunneling into the first resonance state, we have a tip sample distance of one nanometer. For tunneling into the fifth resonance state, we have a tip sample distance of 2.5 nanometer. And here are exemplary constant current maps for, for resonant tunneling, uh, where the tip sample distance has increased to up to 2.5 nanometer. And we can really nicely resolve this atomic scale nanospermian letters um, at tip sample distances in the nanometer regime. Now we have analyzed the intensity of the magnetic contrast of a whole set of constant current images, and here you see the result. And now you see that the magnetic contrast intensity is constant when going from resonance state to resonance state, but it drops in significantly in between. So um, the magnetic contrast uh, is related to the energetic position of the resonance state. And this proves again that it is the spin polarized resonance state that mediates here the spin information across the nanometer space vacuum gap. Now here you see, going back to the double layer iron on the regions, you see here again a line profile and a magnetic map of the double layer spin spiral. And this was uh, again recorded for direct tunneling into the surface at a tip sample distance of 0.6 nanometer. But interestingly, we can increase the tip sample distance to 7.8 nanometer. And you see here a scale, uh, sketch. And we can still nicely, nicely resolve the atomic scale periodic modulation in the line profile and in the magnetic map due to the underlying spin texture. So even at these large distances, the atomic scale spin textures are observable. And with this, I have shown you that we have a technique at hand that we can image on a very local scale at nanometer distances. And we are right in the regime of flying heads or read right heads. But you might have realized that it's called read right heads. So we should also be able to manipulate the magnetism. And this we have already demonstrated by switching a quasi stable nanomagnet at nanometer distance via resonant tunneling. And here's the corresponding experiment. So you see here a quasi stable nanomagnet in the state one. We ran a uh, current by resonant tunneling. And this jump here in the differential conductance indicates the switching event. And the overview image afterwards uh, proved indeed that we have switched here the quasi stable nanomagnet to the state zero while the surrounding remained unaffected. And this magnetization switching was realized via the combined effect of spin transfer torque and joule heating, which we worked out in this publication here. 
So the spin polarized resonant channel link qualifies for a spin sensitive to read write technique with ultimate lateral resolution. And with this, um, I would like to summarize. So I have shown you that we can perform with the spin polarized resonant tunnel link electron reflection experiments on the atomic scale. That we can image atomic scale magnetism at nanometer distances, and we can even manipulate the magnetism on a very local scale. So with this, I would like to thank Professor Jungenlanger, who is hosting my research project in his group, my uh, colleagues and co-workers, the German Research Foundation for ongoing funding of my individual research projects, and you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, thank very, you much. very much. Uh, uh, thank you for the nice talk. Uh, I, have I have a question because uh, uh, in classical classical physics, the object, the object that is under observation is changing because observation is your interaction with an object. So, so in uh, measure, measuring the magnetization on the side waves, uh, you probably introduce more perturbation. So, could you evaluate, could you evaluate to what extent uh, the system, the system is change, is change uh, because of you sent certain currents. Is such is such effect visible or you have any positions in that direction? Ah, oh, thank you for this interesting question. Yes, it is indeed visible. So this is what I mentioned with the last slide by the spin particle perfect effect. So it depends on the current. If we have very low currents in the in the range of nano ampere, then we can only observe magnetism. But if, if we increase the spin polarized current to hundreds of nano amperes or micro ampere, then we affect um, the, uh, the magnetism by the spin transfer torque. So the, the tunneling electrons then exert a torque on the magnetization. And if we have, for example, these very small nano magnets that I have shown on the last slide, um, then we can even force them to switch their magnetization. So we have performed experiments on thermally switching magnets, where you see that if you then uh, put a spin polarized current through the magnet, we force the magnet to align in parallel to the spin polarization of the resonant tunneling current. And this effect we have then used uh, later to switch quasi stable nano magnets. So you have then the combined effect of the heating just reduces the energy barrier between the two. Uh, degenerate states, but um, uh, in, in a hand wavy way, I would say then that um, the spin transfer torque uh, introduces the asymmetry of this energy barrier and it allows to switch then the magnet in one direction in parallel to the spin polarized tunneling current um, while it hinders it to switch back. So we can see this <laughs> and use it to intentionally switch them. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much, Anika.